So now we're going to look into the wave function of a free particle. So that is a particle within a potential that is equal to zero everywhere. So in order to find the wave function, we're going to use separation of variables. So this wave function is equal to xi of x times 5t, where 5t is equal to e to the power of negative i e t divided by h bar. So in order to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation, we need to consider this expression. So for this potential, this is going to be the corresponding time independent Schrodinger equation. And then we can solve this by rearranging these terms in such a way. And then I'm going to define a new symbol k that is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. And you can see that this is actually just k squared. So we have neg equal to negative k squared xi. And you can see that by putting this e inside this square root over here, I'm sort of implicitly assuming that e is larger than 0. And you can see that this is indeed a valid thing to assume, because if e is smaller than 0, then uh, you, you will be able to solve this differential equation. And then you'll see that xi of x is going to be equal to an exponential function, which is not normalizable. So that's why we're safe to assume that e is always larger than 0. So going back to the differential equation, so this is what we get. We get the second derivative of xi of x is equal to negative k squared times xi of x. And then in order to solve this differential equation, you can see that this is a second order differential equation. So there should be two linearly independent solutions available to us. So the first possibility is that xi of x is equal to some constant, let's call it a, times e to the power of i k x. A second possibility is that xi of x is equal to some constant b times e to the power of negative i k x. And so you can see that for a given energy level, so let's say we have, we have specified at a certain energy level, we will be able to use this expression to obtain our k, and then for a corresponding k, you have two possibilities for xi of x, and which are given by these two expressions. So you can see that for a given energy level e, we actually have two possible wave functions. So one possibility is that we have uh, this first expression times phi of t. So don't forget, this is the ultimate expression that we're looking for. So for the first possibility of psi of x, we can take this and then multiply it with the corresponding phi of t, which is equal to e to the power of negative i e t divided by h bar. And then I'm going to simplify this expression a bit by removing this e over here. Now I want to define everything in terms of k. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move some of these terms over to the other side, and you'll see that e is actually equal to h bar squared k squared divided by 2m. So I'm just going to use this expression instead. So this phi of t term over here is going to become something like this. So we have h bar squared k squared divided by 2m times t. So of course these cancel out, so we have negative i h bar k squared divided by 2m t. And then of course you can see that I can combine this with a plus i k x, which in the end would give me something like this. So I have i k, and then we have x minus h bar k divided by 2m t. So this is one possible wave function. So xi x t can be equal to this. So another possibility is, of course, we can use this expression instead. So our wave function for a given energy level e can also be equal to some arbitrary constant b times e to the power of negative i k x, and then we multiply in the phi of t, which is also equal to this expression. And so we multiply this by e to the power of negative i h bar k squared divided by 2m t. And then we can uh, group these terms together in the exponent, and then we can see that we have a negative i k x plus h bar k divided by 2m t. And so these are two possibilities. So you have possibility one, and then you have this second alternative expression. So you can see that for energy level e, we actually get two possibilities for a function 
uh, for a wave function that satisfy the Schrodinger equation. And then you can see that for this second expression over here, I can put this negative sign inside with the k. And then uh, for this term, I can also pull in an extra negative sign over here for the k. So you can see that these two negative signs, they just give me back a positive. So these two expressions are actually the same thing. And you can see that if I define this expression in such a way, it takes on the exact same form as this one over here. So now I can just use a single expression to summarize everything we have over here. So now we have seen that for a, for a given energy level E, the corresponding wave function that satisfies the Schrodinger equation is given by some constant, some arbitrary constant, I'm going to call it A, times e to the power of i k x minus h bar k 2 mt. And then this time I will allow k to be equal to positive, to be equal to positive or minus the square root of 2 m e divided by h bar. So you can see that for energy level e, we have two possibilities. k can be equal to positive 2 m e divided by h bar, and k can also be equal to negative square root of 2 m e divided by h bar. And then no matter what k you choose, you substitute it inside this expression, you will get a function xi xt that will satisfy the Schrodinger equation for such a potential.